Cool. And uh, how did it, in terms of, like, scheduling or shoot days, did you guys just, like, find time to shoot it? Or did you, like, set, like, all right, from this beginning of this month right. until this, we're just going to... Well, we Go would do it. it. We would do it. Uh, you know, two weeks. Uh, you know, we would we would figure it out. It's like, okay, we're probably gonna shoot uh, this this date. Let's, let's shoot for that. And like a, a week or so before, we would know we were shooting before that. So that's how we did it. And uh, we we did our first shoot date. It was uh, eight shoot days, all in all. Uh, and then so the first uh, day we did was in uh, the end of March. We did um, two days in May, and then two days in June. Two, mm -hmm. four. Five. I'm missing some days there. Uh, well, I mean, there were work weekends. That's why. So yeah. we we did uh, two weekends in May, two weekends in June, and one weekend in uh, one day in March. So yeah, oh, nice. yeah. So it was in March or April. It was end of March. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How long? Uh, like, how long were the shoot days typically? Like full days? Uh, oh. Well, we had one day. Our longest <laughs> day was fif fifteen or sixteen hours, yeah. and then our our shortest day was about. Uh, six hours? What was Grand Park? Uh, Grand Park was probably six hours, yeah. including traffic. Yeah, so it so spans yeah. between, and then usually uh, eight to ten hours for the average. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sounds like fun yeah. in hell. Well, yeah, no, it is. I mean, we love the work, and it is hard work. I mean, but that's the kind of hard work, you know, yeah. We yeah. Want, w people want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, uh, basically, um, I'd say that we were very lucky because uh, the people who were in it, uh, especially the actors, were not in it for the money. Right. They were, they just they loved were, the script and they wanted yeah, to do it. They were you know? being paid yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah. yeah they well, weren't in it yeah. for it. Well, that's the yeah. trick. That's the blessing is to like find, uh, really find people to connect with it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. And no, we were very lucky. I mean, that's the thing. We we were just very lucky, uh, yeah. especially with actors. Yeah. You know. So. And I and I do think that cooperation with people from I mean, uh, the person has to be courageous and give people with um, somewhat not an extensive experience a chance as well, uh, because um, sometimes those people would do it for um, a small amount of money or for free. Uh, just because they want uh, a chance to work on something. Yeah, like, the uh, there's filmmaking a guy experience. Exactly. Um, like, um, to me, for example, I really want to get the uh, this film scored, and uh, I know a guy uh, who goes to a scoring school in Spain, and um, he is basically willing to do it for a very low amount of money, you know, and the thing is, many people might actually find it hard to cooperate with someone over the internet and, you know, uh, yeah. saying, oh, now we need to do, like, Skype sessions and stuff, yeah. and that's inefficient, it wouldn't work. In my opinion, you have to take your chances. Yeah. You don't really have the luxury of choosing. We can't do this. Yeah, you don't do have that. a million yeah. dollars to find, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And if they're good, I mean, yeah. they're good, they're good, yeah. Yeah. find a way. But I know, unfortunately, I uh, went to film school, and in that... If, like in the film school I would find um, some students who would only seek working with the best person or with the you know they would not the best person they, they, they I don't know they they usually want to feel like they're on set so they need 25 people on set they need to be spending thousands of dollars on a certain location or they need to be using film you know yeah, it's weird I don't know uh, yeah I don't There's know it's kind of I, I understand the like the like using film or yeah. I understand certain preferences it's fun. But and, and, and you know something that we'd always want to do but to us it's it, the essence of what we're doing is about telling a story you know yeah and the, these fringe aspects of uh, you know the image of it or having a bunch of people on set or spending a lot of money for a location these are all kind of fringe aspects of what uh, behind what really matters which is again the writing uh, the storytelling and that's what Just the having writing a good and the acting is film yeah. yeah right so cool yeah that's pretty much the. So the film will be done um, uh, around September, probably. Hopefully before then. So hopefully we will have a, a final cut and we'll be submitting to festivals uh, mm -hmm. by the time August comes yeah. around. Because oh, what's nice. our? We wanted August fifteenth, right? Yeah. That's kind of our, our due date. Deadline. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you you guys have like a website up for it, or is it just, just like we're on, on uh, we're on Vimeo. Um, we're on uh, yeah, just our teasers on Vimeo right now, and we have a Facebook page, Lana Golan. Uh, it's a uh, facebook.com slash Lana Golan Film. So check it out. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> and you can find the teaser on vimeo.com slash Henry Todd Films. Cool. cool. Yeah. So that's the that's our that's our thing. You know? mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. 
can't wait to see it. I still got to see the rest of the, la yeah. the last one that you did. Oh yeah, yeah. We can't wait to see it either. We're, uh, I mean, because we're we're watching it, but we haven't s obviously haven't seen it from beginning to end yet. Yeah. We're uh, we we're more than halfway yeah. through. Yeah. We're more than probably halfway more through. than sixty percent. Yeah, we have yeah. we have oh, wow. uh, less than a quarter. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely more than six, yeah. more than seventy five percent. Yeah. So. Yesterday we had uh, we finished editing one of our yeah. most improvised scenes and yeah. improvised scenes. Yeah. And it was. We're up till two in the morning. Yeah. We're like fighting yeah. about it. Like no, it like <laughs> looks like that. God damn it. So. Yeah. But uh, it's but it's all fun. I mean, in yeah. the end, you look back on it. <laughs> yeah. You're creating exactly. for God's sake. What are you? Yeah. We're not working in a coal mine. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I always say. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. nothing to fight about. So. I'm not flipping burgers. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> so. What uh, what do you guys think is uh, uh neck your next project gonna be? Well, we have a few uh, that we have in mind, like the sci-fi one we were talking to you about. We did a lot of uh, pre-scripting for that, and I've never actually really done outlines before, and we have a very extensive outline. We built the whole world and everything already, so now it's kind of just about sitting down and putting it on the page, um, the, the, the actual script, that is. We have that. Um, tell them about a couple of your things that you have in mind. Well, um... Basically, I um, I was planning to do some uh, film on a. I, I was thinking of uh, utilizing the chance that I have Henry here uh, to uh, make um, a film about uh, veterans, basically. You know. Um, oh yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, we just that's talked about that's that a one. new idea yeah. that I have in mind because uh, one of the things that you see in veteran films like uh, Rambo, for example, and you know those films. Uh, yeah, the trauma. A guy, exactly. The the person comes back with a mental disorder or something, you know, and he's like this super uh, hero or health person, you know, who uh, just blows everyone up and yeah. so on, you know. So it's it's more of an action. Um, they, they they take the uh, they make it more into an action film kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, I like most of the homeless people that you see every day are basically veterans who are not finding support from the government, you know, and uh, who yeah. suffer yeah, they, from Yeah, they're, they're basically like used up and then their people are just like, exactly. all right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'd love to um So I don't understand why people join yeah. services yeah. anymore. It's like, are you crazy? Like, right. uh, aren't you used enough just like living here? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I, well, I always, um, I always would never do it, you know, would tell people never do it, but... I, I suppose some people just don't know what they're getting into. I have a friend who wants to do it, and they and they do it out of like the thought of glory. I mean, some people just play too much video games. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and so it's that. It's brainwashing. It's some people don't have an option. Uh, although I don't know, uh, it's kind of old. I don't know. I mean, to me that's that's how I see it. But of course, never. It's like I I personally don't understand it, but I can see why. Uh, I, I can only guess basically. Yeah. You know. So. So, but, uh, yeah. so this story would cover like a, a homeless veteran. Basically, that's what I had in mind. So it's uh, still in its uh, initial stages, you know. Uh, so, um, but basically, I want to um, talk more about the humanitarian aspect of it. Not the, not just. Um, um, it's not about a homeless person. It's not about. It's about what pressure and what violence does to a person. Even if you come back to a peaceful place. You carry oh, yeah, the war all. with you. It's all yeah. inside, yeah. yeah. So basically, that's what I want to be talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, as you can probably tell, it's a very, very new idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to tell them it about it. Sounds cool, though. Yeah, it sounds yeah. very cool. So, uh, and me, myself, uh, it's the same thing. You, you start the one thing, uh, like, I, I don't know how many features I have written or yeah. unfinished features, basically. I have about yeah. three. Uh, and, uh, you know, you feel a certain way about them and then you kind of just drop them off. I mean, that's kind of the whole process. And then you finally do something that you, I don't know, not necessarily like more, but something you just uh, kind of ride along with. Yeah, because, just... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah what I comes. think is that writing is an exercise. Yeah. You know, I mean, basically what you do when you write is that you explore your own thoughts and you find inspiration, different things, you know. It doesn't need to lead to something. But you have to believe that practice makes perfect. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very true. Yeah, the more so. experience, the better. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the, yeah. the story so far yeah. in this room. Sounds what are you up cool. to, man? <laughs> what am I up to? Yeah. Man, I've taken on fucking way too much shit. And yeah. it's like, I love it, but it's, yeah. you know, you know how it goes. It gets yeah. stressful. Like right now. Uh, Death Cat, my band, 
my band, which is like a mixed media band, it's right. primarily music, where the live shows are becoming more and more theatrical with like, you know, we have a robot in the band. Right now, yeah. uh, we've been doing Death Cat versus the Mole People, which is a, a song, a, a live show, a comic book composed out of photographs. Uh, it took yeah. fucking, I thought it would be like easier than shooting a film. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's harder. Yeah, so right. so many. Uh, just because you had to pose, and then like people didn't, people didn't read the scripts. Like, <laughs> I'm thankful my friend, who was the photographer, that you know she was part of it, but she just she didn't look at the script. I couldn't get people like yeah. people are just so like that's I don't know, <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of all over the place. Like yeah. I I was originally like oh we'll start in November, be done you know January. Yeah. Didn't start till January. Shot, I think, the last thing in April. Okay. And uh, then a lot of it was like green screen. So I've been like s- just spending hours on Photoshop, every frame in the comic book. Right. And then that's essentially going to turn into. Uh, so then we're going to go on tour, and then there's like live aspects from that story that are like played out, yeah. that we're going to film, and then it's going to be put together into a, like an experimental video, mostly mm-hmm. of like the stills. Interesting. So that's been like. Yeah, that's been eating up a lot of time, and we're about to do this U.S. tour, which is crazy because we've never done anything like that. Yeah, that's cool. And then I've been, uh, and then, and then in the midst of that, we shot a a, a short called "The Horrible Experiments of Doctor Quack." Okay. Which is kind of just like, a, it's like a homage to if you've ever heard of the Phantom Creeps, which was like a Bella Lugosi serial from 1938. I should probably no. Yeah, it's like. Uh, it wasn't that great, but I, I'm I'm like real into like old B movies, like yeah. B horror movies. Yeah. So it's kind of like playing up that where I was um, this mad scientist who was like horror and comedy, and my friend has a studio with like a doctor's office and stuff. So, okay. yeah. and it was like it's like my band acting in it. Is it kind of like uh, are you like a fan of Roger Corman and people like him? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, with all, all right. the Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Right. Yeah yeah. Right. Cool. So we did that, and then uh, I still got to edit that, and then I'm already, like, my mind keeps going, even though I've only done one draft, but it's a project that's been in my head for years called Psychedelic Psychopaths, which is... Now, which is the one that I saw? Telepathic Telephones. Okay, Telepathic Telephones. Yeah. And uh, is that, are you still submitting that one and everything? Or No, that's, I mean, that's kind of like, I, I finished that, like, two years ago. Okay, okay. And, like, uh, I think I'm going to do maybe... W- not one last screening, but one yeah. last screening with all that, like, uh, you know, the four-dimensional yeah. experience. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was telling yeah. her about. Yeah, you'd, like, pop balloons and stuff at the... It was... It, I, I've never been anything like it before. It was it was an experience, that's for sure. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll take that, if anything. Yeah, it's yeah. Element. No, it was interesting. It was cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the last uh, 4D screening in August, August 21st, at this place called Cafe Nella, just because it's, like, it gets pricey, like... Yeah. Like as you saw, not a lot of people showed up. It's been, it's hard to get people to show up to them in LA for some reason. But yeah. Back east, it's, it's every, a little bit easier. Well, yeah, because you're from Detroit, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know. There's some. Everyone is just so uh, in their own thing here. It's, yeah, it's everyone's hard. doing it's, something. Yeah, it's really yeah. hard to, and I don't know the trick yet. I haven't cracked it myself, but to building a kind of community. That's why I like things like this. I mean, that's why I went to your. Uh, screening. I mean, it's it's just about kind of building a, a community of artists and, and yeah. whatnot. Because without it, I mean, you're kind of just dead in the water unless you get lucky. But again, you you can't build yourself out, build yourself up without uh, being around people you trust. I mean, that's why we're planning on you know keeping this pretty tight knit. You know, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't let uh, anyone try and break up your band, for example. Yeah, you know? yeah. So kind of the. Yeah, those collaborative relationships are important. I right. mean, it's just important for communicating and, you know, you find people that you resonate with. I mean, that's the only way you can keep going, so, or, you know, build up. I mean, otherwise, you're just kind of dead in the water solo. Yeah. So. Well, I think uh, probably because Los Angeles is, is a bit special because the industry is here, so yeah. people kind of measure uh, success with tangible stuff, as in, uh, do you start? Did you find an opportunity or not? Did you start making money or not? So it's not basically about the art of filmmaking. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that people who are in the in- I'm not saying that the people in the industry are not into art. But what I'm saying is that sometimes being in an industry could be a distraction from the art because right. oh, you totally. start thinking. Yeah, you start thinking about the tangible achievements. 
And, um, and fortunately, your motivation sometimes comes from your surrounding, uh, from the people who are surrounding you. So if they were like, uh, okay, uh, where are you going with this film? Oh, yeah. uh, so it's not going to get you any right. uh, winning here or there. So you're most probably a loser, you right. know? So I yeah, mean, judgment, yeah. judgment yeah. from the results, people. I mean, there's always a result. Uh, yeah. And for, uh, for us, we just say the result is the finished film. Yeah. Everything else is kind of just uh, whipped cream. It's just uh, uh, kind of... Uh, yeah. It's just the process to get there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's valuable and it's experience itself. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like... Why, I mean, you know, you just look at... Like, I was just working at a movie theater uh, last year, and it's, you know, 95, maybe more percent of, like, you know, the films that come out are, like, shit because it's, like, people recycling and reusing or trying to do stuff that's safe and they're surrounded by these people that have worked on other projects that are safe but not really saying anything and then when you're like in those safe grounds it, there's where does your inspiration really come from right mm -hmm. right well there is no inspiration that's kind of the problem isn't it yeah yeah so it's, iro uh, it's ironic it's like yeah as, as a struggling artist you're like I just want success, and then I, maybe it's if you're... It's the wrong yeah. result, you know? Actually, it's, it's interesting because um, I was reading about the change in the studios even, you know? And people who used to lead the studios were basically artists, and uh, yeah. they came from, um, like, uh, they didn't come from business backgrounds, as in they were not coming from business schools, you know? So um, they really right. cared about you know, putting something out there for people to, you know... They had a little bit of taste. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas I, yeah. now it's all about business people basically are trained to, and it's not their fault, but that's how you're trained in a business school, to look at statistics, to do things safely, to yeah. think about revenue and so on, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah. that becomes the... And there's kind of... So now what you sort of have is this collective uh, mm -hmm. uh, social thing where, yeah, you like you say, people are just not taking any risks. And in fact, that's what people were doing. That's how yeah. that is how people pretty yeah. much do. If you want success, you must take risks, yeah. especially yeah. now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean even even uh, Steven Spielberg actually complained about that. He, because you know, um, he, his his life has been uh, like he he covered a long span of uh, the uh, film um, history yeah. in oh, yeah. the U.S. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been filmmaking All throughout forever. The 80s, you know, yeah. 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 It's a, and uh, basically he says that he misses that there's no more risks being taken and so on. So if mm. the great filmmakers are saying that, so Take you can listen. only imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, I always think it's interesting. It's like, uh, I guess just with like the, the internet and the accessibility to technology, like there's like a, like it's, I don't know. I don't know what I'm, I don't even know where I'm going with this one other than like, uh, I don't know, but I often just think about like, you know, it's like you have the internet, which there's like a sea of like crap and good yeah. stuff and everything yeah. in between. Like you'll have like a five second interesting thing, five second like, crap. what the fuck yeah. is this? <laughs> and right. and then, you know, everybody has their like preferences and such. Yeah. And so it's like weird, uh, like even like, oh, I probably can't say that. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds. I mean, you know, like like things like Vimeo, for example. It's it, what it seems like, especially with DSLR. I mean, that's what. What did we shoot on? We shot on the the Black Magic Pocket Cinema. So things like that. What's the Pocket Cinema version? It's like it's like the Black Magic, but it's like the tiny. It's yeah. literally this big. Oh wow! You know? yeah. um, and it's a it's a brilliant camera. I would suggest any independent filmmaker at this stage even. Yeah. Higher, is it is it bad with lighting like the regular one? No, it's it's actually pretty brilliant. Uh, it you just gotta get the, the lens. lens. The yeah. lens. Uh, no, but it powers pretty well. Uh, well, the one thing is the bad. Batteries uh, only last about 30 minutes, so you have, oh, to, have about, shit. You have to have about like 10 of those or more. But uh, other than that, it's great. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with these like smaller cameras, with the ability to make films, uh, is getting easier. So now you have more, perhaps more diversity, definitely more diversity, and perhaps more competition. Yeah. The question is, what kind of uh, talent rises to the top and uh, well what does rise to the top whatever the top is but what, what yeah that's what that's the other it? funny thing it's yeah. like it's like who are like even thinking of like actors just with like media in general it's like who like I don't know if it's I don't pay attention to shit anymore in the mainstream yeah. at all but it's like who really is like a new famous actor that's consistently in anything really like since yeah. since everything's become so I guess like diluted or like yeah. recycled or like who is the last, like it's almost, 
I don't know. I mean, I guess there's people doing stuff consistently. Like, yeah. you have all those amazing Michael Bay movies. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, those are, yeah, I mean, it's, those are the, the studio picks. I mean, to me, I feel like the, those studio picks, people like the Michael Bays of the world, they're kind of mixed in with the... Uh, military industrial complex in in sort of a, a oh yeah a propaganda. pretty direct way honestly propaganda yeah, pretty much I mean everything you see on the billboards is um, I mean things like that are, are, are crap I mean you have stuff like I haven't seen um, what is it um, what the hell is the name of the Apple guy who did Apple who created Apple oh Steve Jobs, Jobs. yeah so things like that I mean I haven't seen it so. Um, so anyways, I don't know. I mean, you have uh, all these new voices coming up, so we'll see what will happen. I mean, there's so much more existential problems now. <laughs> so, so you know, filmmaking almost seems small sometimes. You know? Yeah, sometimes I think about that, too. I mean, I just think about, like, uh, like going real out there. Like, I'm just like, well, everything, like everything's pretty, everything's transient. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to, like, uh, I'm not even trying to figure it out, but, like, yeah. coming to the point of, like, making stuff that's purposely like transient or like yeah. works in like a a circle but i was gonna yeah. i guess what I, I was gonna ask or what i was getting at before was like do you guys see like uh like you were talking about like you know good quality filmmaking or mm -hmm. artists like rising to a top or even having some sort of like like uh i don't know i guess just like familiar yeah. familiarity amongst each other like yeah. across you know whether it's like a you know, it's interesting. The individual I'm, community to like even yeah. like the country to the world, like how there once was. Well, I think there's definitely more diversity. I think there you have more industries now than you you did as far as film, like more industry capitals. You have one in the South, you have one in the Midwest. Um, you know, so it's uh, it's growing. Uh, the question really is, I mean, yeah, people ask where's film going to be, and and we're asking serious questions: are where are we going to be? You know, yeah. I mean, because uh, you know. We, we do have existential problems like uh, nuclear war and uh, climate change. I mean, these are real problems. So the question is... Yeah, pretty and scary all we can shit, do, Yeah, actually. exactly. And all we can do is kind of reflect what, what we're in, basically. I mean, and even these Michael Bay films that you see, while they are uh, pr a certain type of propaganda, if an alien is looking at these Michael Bay films, they are seeing something reflected in human society. So if anything, we're, we're uh, at least the way I see it, if you're making films, you could be doing some sort of anthropological thing, you know? You like if what they bury, if they dig up your films, they're going to see something and they're going to be like, oh, this is what human society <laughs> was like. This is the record of what was going right, on. Right, exactly. Is why. I mean, that's the best, I mean, that's the at least we can do. I mean, I know? guess none of us really over here know for sure, but you guys think like the, um, like all this shit going on in terms of, because it's, it's, fairly obvious at this point at least uh i guess it's not obvious enough mm -hmm. but you know things like climate change and like war and just like all the fucked up shit we keep yeah. doing to each other do you think it's like intentional as like a form of actually like destroy love destruction mm -hmm. and like uh i guess like perversity of like um life in general yeah. or do you think it's more of just like a ignorant like greedy like i'm a i'm afraid i just want to keep yeah consuming well, more blindly. I'll say my piece on this first, basically. Okay, okay so, well, I mean, you know, so w what's the question, then? What is our, our d like, direct nature? Are we a lethal m mutation? Are we something like a cancer? Or are we just kind of ill at the moment? Is this kind of just a temporary sickness that we could perhaps heal and get over? We don't know. We can only do our best. I mean, uh, you know, there are some people who just want to race to the precipice out of either cynicism, greed, uh, or ignorance, um, and uh, to and you know and from their point of view, they, they'd be like, we're not going, we're not racing to anywhere. What are you, what are you talking about? But the science is there. When we're talking about climate change, for example, the science is there. The oh, argument yeah. is over. You know, it's just is. Yeah, my uncle. Here, I'm gonna pause real.